In 1708, the 47th year of the reign of the Kangxi Emperor, a group set out on a long journey from Beijing. It was an imperial mapping team. The emperor had commissioned the team to survey every one of the millions of square kilometers in China and to draw a map of the vast land. The emperor had developed his taste for maps during the many campaigns he fought in the course of his lengthy reign. The massive project of mapping all of China sprang from his love for the magnificent land. An ordinary day in the Forbidden City, with officials filing in and out of the front hall, maids of honor going to and fro in the women's quarters, and the secret life of the world's largest court veiled in mystery to those beyond its walls. To the Qing dynasty, which had only recently established itself in the central plains of China, the calm was more apparent than real. Challenges and threats on the northern and northwestern borders of China's far west faced the dynasty with a very serious test. Of the Mongol tribes that inhabited these areas, the strongest were the Khalkhas, the Chahars, and the Oirats. Heirs to the Yuan dynasty, they still fielded armies of horsemen and cherished the dream of a unified Khanate. Five hundred years earlier, the great Genghis Khan had built the irresistible Mongol Empire. With the establishment of the Ming Dynasty, his descendants, known as the Golden Family, were forced out of China. But they still hoped to restore their old glory. In 1636, 49 princes from 16 Mongolian tribes gathered in Shenjing to acknowledge the Jurchen leader, Hong Taiji, as the great Khan of Mongolia. From then on, Mongolia featured prominently in the fight for the imperial throne and the unification of China. From 1638, the Khalkha tribe began paying the Qing dynasty tribute of nine whites. That is, eight white horses and a white camel. In this way, it became a vassal of the Qing court. However, each Mongol tribe had its own nomadic territory. Competition over grazing land often led to friction or even mutual attacks among them. A painting of Oirat Mongolia done during the Qing dynasty. It depicts the quiet and leisurely life of the Oirats. The Oirats had four tribes. The Koshuts, Derbets, Torgats, and Jangars. The Jangars roamed north of the Tien Mountains in the Ili River Valley. Their leader was Gurldan, who at an early age had gone to learn the Buddhist scriptures from the Dalai Lama and had been his favorite student. Gardana 可能多了他们这个梦寐以求的一种这个梦想。Gurdan was a formidable opponent for the Kangxi Emperor, a man of great ambition, proficient not only in archery and riding, but also in strategy, he dreamed of becoming the lord of Mongolia. So, after seizing power among the Jangars, he launched a series of campaigns against other Orat and neighboring tribes. Tagwa, Tanu Moshi Mogu, Tabu Jui, 
完成他祖先的那个事业，那怎么办呢？向摩纳蒙古进兵，向摩纳蒙古，想把摩纳蒙古吞并了，吞并后呢，再把摩门蒙古吞并了。While Gildan was unifying the Western Mongolian tribes, he paid tribute to the Qing. The Qing were preoccupied with putting down the peasant rebellions led by Li Zicheng and Zhang Shenzhong, and with defeating the Southern Ming regime. In the early reign of the Kangxi Emperor, the Qing were busy quelling the revolt of the three feudatories headed by Wu Sangui. For a long time, they adopted a policy of conciliation toward both the Mongolian tribes and Tibet. Gildan took this opportunity to build up his power and enlarge his territory. In 1680, Gildan, who had already occupied the northern foothills of the Tian Mountains, sent 120,000 horsemen to seize the city of Kashgar, present-day Kashi, to take control of southern Xinjiang. Next, he pushed east, seeking to control the Koshut and Kalka tribes in Qinghai. He was, in effect, challenging the Qing court for control of these areas. Gildan's expansion forced the defeated Oirat tribes to flee eastward. This posed a direct threat to the central plains. The fleeing Kalkas headed south, so approaching the Great Wall. And posing a potential threat to Beijing itself. On top of that, Gildan tried to further his goals by forming a coalition with Russia. As the Kangxi Emperor contemplated the implications, he suffered many a sleepless night. Gildan, this character, he is not trying to defend Sagar. He is trying to use Sagar's power to achieve his own political goals. 大家都知道《尼布楚条约》，当时这个呃，清朝跟俄罗斯签订《尼布楚条约》，确定了中国跟俄国在东北方向的这个正式的这个按现代意义的边界线。但是就在这个签订《尼布楚条约》谈判的过程中间，这个高尔丹也看到了这一点，他想利用这个这次机会来吸引俄国对他的支持。俄国呢，当时也想利用。噶尔丹这是个政治力量，作为牵制康熙的一个筹码，且希望在这个尼布楚条约的签订过程中间，能够达到更好的、取得更好的效果，所以有这么一个过程，有这么一个过程。但是呢，在这个过程中间呢，噶尔丹呢，从某种意义上呢，他想利用沙俄，实际上被沙俄所利用。康熙时代，所有 Western powers on the rise。But the two great rivals of the Qing dynasty were Tsarist Russia in the north and Samurai Japan to the east. The first was a fledgling power, ambitious to expand its territory, while the other lagged behind but could still be tempted. In 1582, the father and grandfather of Nuhatsa, whose descendants founded the Qing dynasty, were killed in the Battle of Gora. That same year, the Cossack cavalry of Yomak Timofeyevich crossed the Urals and entered Siberia. Now Russia was harassing the Qing dynasty itself. It had long coveted lands in the north of China. The Kangxi Emperor now began his first tour of the northeastern frontier. He wrote in a poem beside the Songhua River, "The silver spray shines like glittering brocade." In 1688, just as Qing assistance was forcing Russia to withdraw from the territory of the Khalkhas, Gildan invaded it with 30,000 horsemen. He was urged on by the Russian general Feodor Alexeyevich Golovin. The defeated Khalkhas fled south and made their submission to the Qing dynasty. Under the pretext of hot pursuit, Gildan plundered the Ujumuchin area, which was under Qing authority. Two years later, Gildan invaded the Ulan region, east of the Urhui River, the area of present-day Olagai Prairie in Inner Mongolia. It was his first major battle with the Qing army. Ujumuchin Zuoyi Qi 经历了乌尔会合发生双方历史上的第一次的比较大的冲突。这次战役呢，是以这个清军的惨败
而告终。那么双方共投入了有四万多的兵力，激战了半天。Having defeated the Qing army, Guldan made the Kangxi Emperor an offer: Your Majesty shall rule in the south, and I can rule in the north. Guldan followed up his victory by heading south through the Hulun Bayar grassland to reach Ulan Butong, just 350 kilometers from Beijing. Faced with this crisis, the Kangxi Emperor realized that Guldan was powerful and ambitious, and sure to have his eye on the central plains until his death. He responded by launching a war of extermination. From 1583, when Nurhatsa began to unify the Georgian tribes, to 1683, the 22nd year of the Kangxi Emperor. China had been divided and at war for fully a hundred years. Kangxi had to restore China's territorial integrity. On the 6th of July, 1690, a ceremony to farewell the army was held in the Hall of Supreme Harmony in the Forbidden City. Kangxi reviewed the troops as they left Beijing through the Dongzhou Gate. He himself set out to lead the army north. But owing to illness, he had to return. Fu Chen, his half brother, led the army north through the Great Wall at Gu Beko to reach Ruhe, modern Chengde. There they camped in twelve battalions, twenty kilometers from the enemy. Traces of the camp are still visible today. Ulan Butong Peak. Stands on the southern edge of Hun Shanda Ke, in Kershen Kertang Banner, Chufang. Here, in 1690, the Kangxi Emperor sent 200,000 men against Guldan in the Battle of Ulan Butong. Guldan made his camp at the top of a peak, and set up a wall of camels along the river below it. The camels' legs were roped together, and his troops used them for cover. 清军呢是利用他们的大炮进行这个轰击，那么对这个准噶尔的军队呢，那么造成了有效的杀伤。The nearby Zhangjun Pond or General Pond was named in memory of General Tung Guogang, who was killed in the Battle of Ulan Butong. 二十万铁骑来到这儿，来到这儿，当时指挥这块的是他的舅舅，康熙的舅舅滕国刚。就我背后这块儿，这战场就在这儿，咱们这这个叫将军坡子，背后有个山，你们看到了吗？这个乌兰布通就指的这块乌兰布通就指的这个山，咱们汉语翻过来就是大红山子，大红山子战役，蒙语翻过来就是乌兰布通之战，当时就发生在这里。Today the battlefield is a well-known tourist attraction. General Tung lies at rest deep in the Kershen Kertang grasslands. Guldan was defeated, but lived to fight another day, and the Khalkhas became formal subjects of the Qing dynasty. In 1691, the Kangxi Emperor went to Dwolun County, Chilingol League, in Mongolia. There, at Dolong Nur, he presided over a grand banquet. To unveil an alliance, in order to make the atmosphere as impressive as possible, he brought with him four elephants from Beijing. Dolun is Mongol word. Dolun is seven words. This Chinese word is Dolun. This seven rivers. Then Kangxi is in this seven rivers. He built many gates. He built all the Mongol kings. He brought the Mongol kings. He brought all 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 the 蒙王宫请来西藏的喇嘛请来，外蒙古的王宫请来，举行一个阅兵会盟，这大家都来。然后呢，在这个仪式上正式宣布，卡尔卡外蒙古归我清朝，就这个意思。正式宣布，宣布完了以后呢，就说外蒙古的这个这个这个部落，从此以后就是我清朝的一部分。呃，这个制度呢，就按内蒙古的制度走，然后官呢，我给你们封。然后呢，每年进贡九白之贡，九匹白马，一匹白骆驼，叫九白之贡
The Kangxi Emperor set up 34 banners throughout the Kalka lands, implemented the Jia Sag system, conferred titles of nobility on the leaders, and personally handed wine to Jerb Sun Damba, the Kalka leader. Recognizing the Mongols' attachment to Tibetan Buddhism, the Kangxi Emperor built the Hui Zong, or Excellent Ancestor, temple. He himself wrote the text of the temple plaque. It set the seal on Northern Mongolia's incorporation into the Qing dynasty at Dolon Nu. Sitong 特别是外蒙古的卡尔萨蒙古 Five years later, the Kangxi Emperor launched another campaign against Gurdun. On the 30th of February 1696, he led 30,000 men of the Manchu Eight Banners and the Han Green Standard Army into the grasslands. He planned to lure Goldan to Zhao Modo, near present-day Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. This painting shows just a part of the baggage train required to support the Qing army. With Goldan holding the high ground, Kangxi ordered General Fei Yanggu to concentrate on taking the heights. In the end, Goldan suffered a crushing defeat. The Qing army chased him through the night, and his wife, Anu, was killed. He fled into the desert of eastern Mongolia with just 20 remaining men. The fighting had lasted for 98 days. The forces remaining to Goldan after Ulan Butong were annihilated. In February 1697, Emperor Kangxi launched a third campaign aimed at wiping out every trace of support for Galdan. In the cold wind of early spring, Kangxi led his army all the way to the mountains on the northern shore of Mongolia's Kurlun River. A month or so later, deep in the grasslands at Achaamuta, Galdan died. Some say of illness, while others say he took poison. Either way, with his death, the Qing dynasty stabilized its northwest and northern frontiers. The snowy plateau of Tibet, remote and mysterious, was known in China as Tubo, up to the end of the reign of the Kangxi Emperor. The Yuan dynasty had brought the region under its rule, while granting dominion over it to the Dalai Lama. In 1716, an army of Mongol horsemen led by Tso Wang Rabtan, the new chief of the Jungars, swept into Tibet. By taking advantage of conflicts between various local forces, Tso Wang Rabtan launched a campaign aimed at seizing control of the Tibet Qinghai region. He 那么这条路非常非常的隐蔽。所以说呢，在西藏的拉藏汗并没有发觉。In Tibet, Sir Wang Rabtan's men went on the rampage, destroying more than 500 monasteries. For a time, the Qing dynasty's far southwest border was engulfed in flames. In May 1718, Emperor Kangxi sent Sir Lung chief of the imperial bodyguard, to quell the rebellion in Tibet. But Sir Long walked into an ambush and his army was annihilated. He himself was captured and killed. 
Two years later, Emperor Kangxi sent his 14th son, Yin Jun, at the head of a larger expedition. In Lhasa, the Tibetans gave the Qing army a warm, musical welcome. The army drove out the Jungars and restored the fifth Dalai Lama, Lobsang Gyatso, with a grand enthronement ceremony. Subsequently, 4,000 Qing troops were stationed in Lhasa to preserve the peace. Kangxi 清朝的境内不控制西藏，确认确立西藏的西，呃，清朝在西藏的这个管理的体制上就开了个好头。Qing rule over Tibet was now long established. Hong Taiji used to send letters to the Tibetan Khan and the Great Lama. The Shunzhe Emperor had successfully continued his father's strategy. As early as 1642, Gusha Khan, leader of the Oirat Mongols of the Koshut Khanate, was invited by the fifth Dalai Lama, Lobsam Gyatso, to overthrow the ruling Changpa monarchy. This made the Dalai Lama the highest authority in the Tibet Qinghai region. There were multi ethnic groups living together in the vast land of China. Dealing with the relationship between ethnic groups on the frontiers was a new challenge for the Shunzhe Emperor. While supporting Kusha Khan, the Shunzhe Emperor also strongly supported the Dalai Lama. In the ninth year of the Emperor's reign, the Dalai Lama led a delegation of 3,000 to Beijing. It arrived at the end of the year and included among its number the Panchen Lama and representatives of Kusha Khan. The Emperor decided on a special way to welcome the Dalai Lama and his party. He received them at the Nan Yuan hunting ground. Sengwa 那就是藏传佛教 The Dalai Lama stayed in the temple specially built for him, the Yellow Temple, which stands outside Anding Gate in Beijing to this day. The emperor combined administration with religion in Tibet by allowing Gusha Khan and the Dalai Lama to take on administrative and religious affairs respectively. In 1653, Emperor Shunzhe sent ministers to present Gu Xia Khan with a gold seal and a gold plaque. In 1722, Emperor Kangxi died of illness at the age of 69. He had fought for his country throughout his life, ushered in an era of great governance for the Qing dynasty, and laid the geographical foundations of modern China. His son, Yin Jun, aged 45, succeeded to the throne and reigned for 13 years. He soon faced the challenge of Tibetan separatism. Lo Budzan Danjin, Prince of the Koshuts, together with leaders of various Qinghai Koshut tribes, 
had joined the Qing army to expel Tzu Wang Rabtan. In recognition of their contributions, the Qing court gave them awards and made new appointments. However, Lobazan Dunjin, who had long wanted to dominate the Qinghai Tibet region, was greatly dissatisfied. In the Yongzheng Emperor's first year, he rebelled against the dynasty, declaring that he would restore his ancestors' hegemony by ruling Tibet and controlling Qinghai. The Emperor urged Lobazan Dunjin to withdraw his troops and negotiate for peace. Lobazan Dunjin would not listen. This drew a quick and strong response from the Qing court. The Emperor appointed Nian Gong Yao as general in chief and ordered him to march from Xining and make a night attack on Lo Bazan Dunjin. Hastily roused and in a panic, Lo Bazan Dunjin put on women's clothing and fled to the Jungar Khanate. In just 15 days, 600,000 square kilometers of land had come under direct Qing rule. The Yongzheng Emperor had now turned his attention to the Jungars. In the fifth year of the Emperor's reign, Tzu Wang Robtam died. His son, Guldan Tseren, succeeded him as Khan. Two years after that, the Qing invaded the northwest via two routes to remove the Jungar threat. It took another four years before the weakened Girl Dun Tseren sued for peace. The Emperor agreed to discussions, hoping to define a clear boundary between the Jungars and the Kalkas. A peaceful Jungar Khanate would be a solid buttress for the Qing dynasty's western territories. <laughs> In the National Library of Sweden, there is a map showing the vast western territories of the Qing dynasty more than 300 years ago. It was the work of Girl Dun Tseren and was widely circulated. Zulushitian, 西北新疆啊，那边的中国疆域图。In 1735, the Yongzheng Emperor died, and his son Hongli ascended the throne under the title Chen Lung. In 1751, the Chen Lung Emperor began his first southern tour. It was a long journey, lasting more than a hundred days. On the trip, he visited the mausoleum of Emperor Hong Wu and climbed Mount Tai. He saw that the country was prosperous and the people at peace, which pleased him. He encouraged the people to reclaim wasteland to increase grain production. Sixty years later, cultivated land had increased by some three million hectares and the population by over 100 million. <laughs> Yichen 
这个时候，你看看这个书法家、画家，这个小说、诗歌，大量的出现。所以，我觉得这个时代。这个时候的中国的经济、人口、生活，在世界上十八世纪的和十八世纪同期的欧洲比较，和其他的国家比较，已经在世界领先了。However, behind the peace and tranquility look the sporadic separatism of Tibet and Xinjiang in the far west. It was a problem that the Qing dynasty had struggled to solve throughout its history. When the Qian Long Emperor looked back on his 60-year reign, he saw two great accomplishments. One was the military campaign in Xinjiang, and the other was his six southern tours. In 1745, Gildan Seren died. He had long confronted the Qing court, and the Yongzheng Emperor had never moved to crush him. Gao Huaqi, his son, succeeded him as the Jungle leader. In 1754, Da Wachi defeated Amur Sana, the grandson of Sir Wang Rabtan. Amur Sana then submitted to the Qing dynasty. That November, Emperor Chen Lung braved the cold and galloped for three days to meet Amur Sana and his party. Chen Lung Huangdi said, "This way, we two first fight the battle. This Emperor, five hundred and fifty, Amur Sana, ne." 五发才中了两两三箭，一看这家伙咋和清朝打的？皇上都中了。Speaking to Amur Sana in Mongolian, the emperor sought his advice about tackling Dawachi. Amur Sana recommended attacking in spring, when their horses are thin and cannot easily escape. That summer, the Qianlong Emperor set out from the Yuan Ming Yuan Palace. Passed through the Great Wall at Gubeko, and made a pilgrimage to the northeastern city of Shengjing. He was 44 years old and in his prime. In his native land, he paid homage at the ancestral tombs and gazed at the land where his ancestors had forged their achievements. The tour, the longest of his four eastern tours, lasted 153 days. Using our modern day slang, 是为了对这些满族王公八旗官兵进行传统教育，就是我们要牢记传统，这才有乾隆二十年以后的统一新疆的重大胜利。Following the tour, the Qian Long Emperor began an aggressive military campaign in the far west. It was time to settle accounts with Da Wachi. In February 1755, the 20th year of Chen Lung's reign, the Qing army arrived in Ili. Da Wachi, who had made himself calm, was roused from sleep and eventually captured by the Qing army. However, one event follows another. Amu Sana, who had submitted to the Qing court and been granted the title of Qin Wang. Was offended when his request to be chief Khan of the Jungars was turned down. So that August, he began a revolt against the Qing dynasty. The emperor was furious, and sent a third expedition to Ili. In April 1757, the Qing army won a major victory at the Battle of Kulongwe. On the emperor's second southern tour. He visited the home of fish and rice in Jiangsu and Zhejiang provinces. He also held three military parades there. Meanwhile, in June, Amu Sana fled to Russia, where he soon died of smallpox. The Jiangars, who had ravaged the northwest region and repeatedly challenged the Qing court for nearly 70 years, were finally pacified. After more than 2,000 years, the problem of nomads raiding the central plains was finally solved. 到乾隆中期，新疆问题完全解决了，完全归附到清朝的管辖之下。譬如说，设立伊犁将军，伊犁将军驻地在会远城，现在新疆伊宁的火城县，管辖的面积。
，在清朝大约相当于二百一十万平方公里。In 1782, the 27th year of the Qianlong Emperor's reign, the Qing court established the position of General of Ili to supervise Xinjiang. 从这次之后开始，就新疆直接归中央政府直接管辖，直接管辖。当时伊犁将军在新疆他，他他的管理的体制也很有意思，就是充分体现了清朝政府的所谓因俗而治的这么一种策略，这么一种思思路。After generations of effort, the entire western border region had become a unified and inseparable part of the mainland. In addition, the Kangxi Emperor had recovered Taiwan. Although the campaigns had cost 60 to 70 percent of total annual revenue, they had also played an important part in promoting the consolidation of the frontiers and the unification of China. In the prosperous era of Kangxi and Qianlong, from fruit-growing Xijiang in the south to Tibet with its drifting clouds, all was unity and peace. Zhou Kang Temple in Lhasa and the Ta Shu Limpo Monastery in Shagatsa both hold copies of an important document that established long-term stability in Tibet. It is the Tibetan version of the Qianlong Emperor's 29 regulations for better government in Tibet, which entrusted Tibet's administrative personnel judicial, fiscal, diplomatic, and military powers to the Grand Minister Resident of Tibet. It marked a more comprehensive and effective rule by the Qing dynasty in Tibet. Qingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingqingq
Over his 60-year reign, the record of Emperor Gao Chong of the Qing Dynasty, which recorded his words and deeds, came to 1,500 volumes. With the Empire's unification and ethnic synergy, these accomplishments will be renowned for centuries. The Qianlong Emperor's words reflect the heights reached in the early Qing Dynasty. By then, China had finally become a multi-ethnic country, with a territory unprecedentedly vast and a high degree of unity. The Chinese nation had become a community in which dozens of nations shared a common fate. The complete map of the Qing Dynasty. The surveying and mapping had started back in the era of Kangxi. Qianlong twice sent teams to Xinjiang to improve it. The Qing Dynasty's territory extended from late Balkash and the Pamir Plateau in the west to the sea in the east, from the outer Shingan Mountains and the Sea of Okotsk in the north to the Nansha Islands in the south. It covered over 13 million square kilometers. A country with a vast territory, a large population, and many ethnicities stood proudly in the east. <laughs>